to stay in the village for two months. Uh, that's what I will say later on. I will go faster because uh, I still have an example of this. Uh, so there are five parts and I will go very faster. Um, most of the issues uh, related uh, with uh, uh, how we try to involve community in dealing with many of our uh, problems, whether in environmental issues, economic and other activities uh, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, at first, I would like uh, to back to one of uh, the book that I need to read when I study in Japan. And it's really hard because all in countries. Okay. <laughs> uh, written by Tabeta, it's about uh, the commons. So according to this, this book, uh, if uh, we see our globe, our uh, world, uh, mostly uh, dominated by what the world is common. What is the commons is including the ecosystem and its relation to the social species of or social life. So most of us living with what we call commons. Uh, and some part is what we call is public sector and small part is private sector. This is how the history has been going for a long time. But recently, but nowadays, everything changes. It's dominated by the market. Even we have a lot of resources here in Indonesia, probably dominated owned by the private companies, or even the state companies, uh, including. That means the role of community is really, really very small part. Uh, that's what Tabeta Masahiro written in this book. And then we are also see nowadays some trends what uh, has been uh, published by what in 2011, our situation now. Uh, this 20% uh, of uh, rich occupied 82% of the global resources, while 80 compete for 20%. So this is now another chance for what we call is uh, here, the companies. And then uh, the second book I have to read at the time is <laughs> Uh, the Beatles group, Pop uh, Room, uh, the 30 years uh, update of limited growth, uh, and we found many scenarios. I think that today we already hear about scenarios if climate change happens and so on. And there are a lot of challenges, including uh, if we keep our lifestyle like this, and then what will be happen in the next 2050 or 2100? I think that this is a very nice book uh, for me uh, to read about uh, prediction or projection <laughs> of uh, our future. Uh, and for sure, there are a lot of our common problems, whether we are in Indonesia, in Europe, in the United States, or wherever we are. And uh, related with the global, far global warming, there is a nice uh, uh, edition of Newsweek in uh, 2007. Uh, they write the winners in a warming world. And for us, in tropic, and probably make worse and worse uh, based on uh, the prediction. <coughs> and what I'll do is, is uh, including uh, the problem of water and food availability, including uh, accessibility. The water issues could be too much water, flooding. For us, it's already happened nowadays. My hometown, I live in a small island. Uh, last year, uh, it's flooded and whole city uh, covered by the water everywhere. And it never happened before. And flooded. Flight. And some part also have a problem with the water, the scarcity of water because of the drought. 
Second is a loss of biodiversity and environmental uh, service. This is uh, one of the uh, challenges. And health issues is very important in many of tropical countries in Indonesia. Uh, later I would like to show some data. And the problem in infrastructure, including related with the security and sovereignty related uh, with the big migration. Um, also for the case of fisheries in Indonesia, few day, few weeks ago we just visited one remote island in the eastern part of Indonesia. We meet the Japanese here, uh, where we are now, traveling for 15 days to catch fish, and then stay at the island for six, uh, three to six months, Andrea. Three to six months, and then return back here to catch the fish. So there are a lot of challenges related with the, whether due to the climate change or even the deterioration of these resources from, from the near the nearest. So these are the real challenges. Uh, the challenge is for sure it's more vulnerable because we are not spread. There are a lot of islands here based on data we all we almost make jokes. The data say this seventy thousand islands. And then we put 17,845. Yeah. 17,845. What does it mean that the independence of Indonesia? 17 August of 1945. <laughs> <laughs> That's our island. <laughs> because too many islands. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, this, uh, there are little a lot of uh, challenging for uh, us in uh, island countries. Uh, there are some scenarios, there are many report, reporting of vulnerability of the changing of the climate, whether to livelihood infrastructure, and, and even some island has been reported, 24 islands is gone, uh, in 2010, uh, sorry, in 2000. It, it is predicted due to the climate change. They flooded. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Stringing. Uh, last year I visited one, one of the islands. Uh, so they call it a second island in Maluku. Uh, and then only left six. We visit all the six islands and we cannot find the one. The people know there, are, there was seven islands, but now only left six. Six islands. Uh, uh, very small island. So, and uh, another challenge is uh, most of the Indonesian population is uh, live in the lowland, in the coastal zone. But if we uh, see the Jakarta, most people live in a very close to the uh, coastal areas. The data says 60% of our population live in the coastal areas. So that's why it's very vulnerable to the, any changing of the environment. And another data is uh, Indicating the potential of uh, uh, favor dengue, uh, we call the Mamperdara dengue. I think that there is medical data here that can explain much more. But the occurrence of the dengue is increasing, and this is for sure due to the changing of environment. Another issue is related, as uh, uh, the dean said. Uh, the challenge is of good uh, security. In 1995, we faced the problem of La Nina and caused flooding. In 1997, we faced El Nino and caused dark. There are a lot of challenges due to the changing of the uh, environment here in uh, Indonesia. It, this is the one I said before, the fish migration. So this guy came from here traveling about 15 days to fishing ground that he never do that before. Just started last year to travel here because uh, this is uh, particularly in the, uh, around the Pacific there are a lot of fish stock in Indonesia. And since the military, uh, our minister is really strict. <laughs> Uh, it's a strong woman and every foreign fishing boat, at, or even not foreign fishing boat, but 
for rain main kissing boat. So if you are buying kissing boat from uh, Norway and then we bring here five, six years ago, it is prohibited to catch fish because it is included in foreign person. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so very, very interesting that some pieces related with history policy time uh, in Indonesia. Uh, I, I think you must know a little bit about this, <laughs> this marble wall uh, here. So, to deal with this issue, there are a lot of uh, reference that we can learn about the mitigation and adaptation strategies related with the environmental change, uh, starting from rising education to research and development. But I think I would like to highlight one uh, issue uh, today is related with the how to see the potential of community to deal with our common problems. I uh, cited a very nice definition of community from Encyclopedia of Community. Uh, the, the community defined as uh, it's a very nice term, I think. They could not put a roof over their head without the cooperation of others. So the community is really connected one another and can support one another. And, and so on. It's very long. But I think uh, this definition, uh, how to say, give us the potential for everybody to cooperate. The, the logic of cooperation. Uh, and for sure, this is a different with the logic of the economic, I think, the, rational, the rationality uh, uh, basis. So there are a lot of, uh, not based on economy, if you see the community. There are another issues related with uh, so many potential of the community. And that's why we can optimize the potential of this de de that definition to many of empowerment uh, activities. What the empowerment mean? Uh, empower, mean? empower is uh, uh, let's to one to have the people to help themselves. How to strengthen the community to help solving their own problems. And uh, this is one of the issues that raised by Gajah Madri University later on. I would like uh, to show. Uh, we call this, uh, we developed a program so called KKN, KKN in Indonesia. This is a prohibition term now in Indonesia because uh, KKN, KKN is defined as corruption, pollution, and nepotism. And it is prohibited. But for the German University, it is a lot because it's a community service activity. <laughs> uh, later, I would like to say that one. So, uh, to empower, uh, according to many reference, uh, need two, uh, three uh, strategies. And for sure, the highest one is uh, from the government side, policy and planning. And for sure, it needs a action. Uh, and the lowest one, we need uh, to raise the awareness and education. So this is one of our small research in Bali, uh, how community can be, how to say, uh, optimized to manage their own resources collectively. Uh, so uh, this is uh, International Airport of Bali. It's very close here. There is one village, a uh, small village, so-called Donganan village. Uh, this is, uh, we call it Jimbaran Bay. This is very well-known bay because uh, there is a uh, bombing for many years ago, in 2005, I think. Uh, this is a very well-known bay. This, this bay is really crowded. Uh, 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 there are, in, a, in this bay, uh, in this village, there are about uh, 11,000 people live. The, the village is only one kilometer uh, length and wide one kilometer. Very small uh, village, but occupied by 11,000 people. It's a really uh, dense uh, village. Uh, what interesting thing is uh, 
the people came to this village about this number. Every day, about uh, 2,000 people came to this village to buy seafood. 2,000 people, you can imagine 2,000 people came to a very small village, very dense village. Uh, so the situation is uh, like this during the night. And it's really crowded during the night. Uh, in, the, in the afternoon, uh, they start to come here in the afternoon just to see this one. <laughs> sunset. <laughs> because very beautiful sunset. And then in the night, uh, they have uh, uh, seafood in this first one. So, here the next one. So, at the time you think about uh, if you see the potential of 2,000 people come, then, then, and then the question is, who's the owner of this business? For a long time, the owners came from the outsider of the village, whether from Jakarta, including from Australia. We identify one by one at the time, the owner of the restaurant. And then they start to rethink about how to benefit the local. And then they think, uh, they decide to build, uh, uh, how to say, a new decision, new arrangement of the field, uh, of the uh, of the this uh, coastal areas, and then they decided to divide the one kilometer of a beach into two, half for this guy, for the fisherman, and half for restaurant. Uh, and then the question to uh, who's on the restaurant if we rearrange and then they decide the restaurant belongs to all the villagers 11,000 people own the villager each villager has put money to another this business can be done day by day and the villagers agreed to put all the money in each restaurant and then they decide based on the situation of the village they have a 600 if there is 600 then how many restaurants that we can buy in the 500 meters uh, long of the beach and they decide they build 24 restaurants that's mean each <coughs> hundred have four restaurants and then who's the owner? Each hamlet. Each people in hamlet. What's a hamlet? Ah, hamlet is a little village. A little village. Is this a tiny village? Yeah. Yeah, so in a village. In a village, uh, they have like a family, family group member. So they divided uh, the village into part by part. So in Indonesia we call it Dusun. Uh, in Bali they call it another word, but uh, it's, it's like a district but in a village. Yes, yeah. Or a suburb. Okay. I think it's yeah, kind of just a little village. Yeah, a little village. In fact the village is already is small. <laughs> 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 but it's totally smaller. Yeah, many, many villages. How many families per se, like, would you have in a hamlet? How many families? Is that like, is that like... 1,500 families. Two hamlets. One thousand four thousand. families in a one village. And hamlets. hamlets. Six hamlets. Six hamlets in a village. Yeah. Three hundred people in a village. Yeah, about. So they are all in the same area, though. Yeah. So if <laughs> let's give an example, this is a village. This one is village. So this village divided into six. So one, one here, one here, another one here, and here. So they divide clearly the border of each hamlet to become village. Well, it's clear that we all have to go to Bali. 
Actually, I'm promoting your thesis, but I'm not this. You should go there. <laughs> so, it's an English word. It's an old English word. An old English word, okay. Yeah. So then, uh, the, uh, the restaurant they manage collectively based on the hamlets. And then uh, the nice thing is uh, at first uh, the investor came from outside and now came to the local. And the money now uh, start to, how to say, only circle in this village. So when the lot of foreigners come eat there, they have money. And then they put some of the benefit to the very local microfinance institution, not to belong to the bigger one. If they need some money, then they borrow from the local finance, they put to the, another business. So, this is one example of how community deal with the problem of uh, ownership of the resources around the village, particularly the very rich uh, village like this. This is one uh, small example of how community deal with their problems. And the second, uh, the second issue, the second case is, I just saw some figures how to deal with the many of uh, situation. As I mentioned before, sometimes they have flooded, sometimes they have dry situation. Many villagers built uh, such very simple technology by themselves. You can see here, here they can plant rice, but they put a little bit higher for vegetables. So they are trying to optimize they are willing to produce more uh, food. Another example is uh, here. Kampung uh, Spinach water? Yeah, spinach. Spinach water? Spinach water. Water spinach. Water spinach. Water spinach. So, usually they never put fish in a, around the spinach water farming. So now they think about if only producing spinach water, this is too small money we can gain. And then make a very simple one. Just make two parts, some part for spinach water and some part for producing fish. This very simple technology that is community developed. And another one, yes, is very popular one worldwide. Uh, we call it Minapati, uh, rice farming and fish. So we can produce paddy uh, and at the same time we can produce fish. And this has been promoted by FAO uh, for coping in another part of the world. The, the area is very close here uh, and developing in this uh, region, uh, what we call Minapati. This is how the community deal with many of issues related with their probably the scarcity of the land or the small, uh, how to say, the small, they only have uh, ownership very small uh, land. So they are trying to raise the productivity. Uh, another issue, uh, last one that I would like to say with you is uh, this. Uh, our project, our department project, uh, we are conducting, uh, trying to introduce new uh, ecosystem in the uh, northern coast of Java. Uh, the northern coast of Java is the area that we have been overexploited. The guy who I said moved uh, from Java to the Maluku Island is came from the northern part of Java. Why they move? Because of there is no fish very close to the area. And then uh, we are in the department trying to introduce another very very small project. Uh, we put some of uh, we call it the fish apartment to me. <laughs> How to say? It's like. Uh, people here, fish can live in apartment. 
and then we put uh, it's like a piece of apartment like this, and then so it's about uh, one soccer field. Uh, we put the nose, uh, and we still monitor how the catch. Uh, now, I think the Faisal can tell us much more later on uh, the result of uh, these activities. One of our participants is now in the field. Uh, already will join. Uh, and then now we are trying to change the people living. Usually they catch fish with the prohibition fishing gear, prohibition by the Ministry of Sushi. That's a troll. Trolling is prohibited. And then we are trying to shift them from trolling to and line. So they can hook and line around uh, this uh, new ecosystem. Now it's still going, uh, this project is uh, still ongoing, uh, financed by the corporate social responsibility of the nearest uh, companies. So we are, there, uh, we are working with the companies uh, to promote uh, the community's uh, activities. And what is interesting is, uh, when we are trying to see if the participation of those people, those guys, really, really uh, increased because the expectation of uh, new potential livelihood from prohibited and now they can freely catch the fish. I think uh, that's uh, for the case of the community, last one in five minutes. I just want to share these the university's activities regularly conducted two times in every, uh, in every year. In, that's mean in every semester. We call it uh, Student Community Service Program, or we call KKM. Uh, it was introduced in 1971. Until now, it is still uh, we conduct it. And it is compulsory, so you credit. Uh, they have to go to Philips for two months. Now I have my study student now in the field, uh, in a very remote island uh, in the eastern part of Java, uh, eastern part of Indonesia, in Sumbawa. So after this meeting, I have to uh, bring them back. Bring them back. <laughs> Uh, so, usually, uh, university uh, asks the student to form a group. So, the group must be composed of uh, what we call is interdisciplinary activities. Those coming from physical infrastructure, whether engineering and some of uh, faculties, those coming from socio-economic and culture, those from community health, community uh, health, and those from agriculture related field. So, 30 person must be composed of these uh, four fields of study. They live together in a village for two months, and they have to deal with any problem in village. So, this uh, the start, they start making group, and then after making group, they are dispatched to the village, and then meeting with the people uh, to discuss many programs and start starting the program collectively with the communities uh, or applying certain technology. And now, recently, we have many foreigners come as a visitor <laughs> or participant for, for only one week. They cannot stay for two months in the village. <laughs> it is dangerous. <laughs> uh, so, for example, some example programs is like this make a, a simple bridge connecting one village to another village using local resources. Uh, some, some activities is that they teach uh, children in the fields or many of education related activities in the field. Uh, so this is the, the university's program and compulsory. Uh, and now foreigners including for Mopri, came, join for one week, usually Japanese join for one week uh, in the field uh, for doing uh, similar activity with the student. I think that's all uh, that I can share.
But as a uh, conclusion that uh, we are at the university or even facilitator, some type uh, uh, we call it snow agent. In, when we go to village, we feel that we know everything. We understand how to deal with the problems. That's how we feel. Our, we, we always feel like, like that. But we always highlight the student when they're going to village, we have to appreciate local knowledge, local culture, local resources, and local skill, including the local process. Uh, that's how the important thing we need to consider when we deal working together with community. I think that's all for me if you have any questions. Uh, but let's please uh, finish this work first, I think. Thank you.